Hello, I'm Richard Murphy and I want to talk about a subject that somebody asked me to make a big video about which is how do banks create money? Now, I've already done a video explaining how the government creates all our money and that is true. Every single pound you have is of course government created because nobody but the government can create pounds. Literally no one. Try it and see what happens. You'll end up in prison. But our banks do undoubtedly create money, which is something that the Bank of England has itself agreed, although only under pressure, and only since April 2014. So what is the process by which banks are allowed to create money? Why are they allowed to create it? And why can they still go bust, which is obviously an important question in that context? Now, remember, this stuff is just literally a promise to pay. There's nothing behind a note. There's nothing behind your bank account. There is no gold. There is no other currency, silver or anything else. No precious metals. It's just a promise. And it says so on every note you have. And that's true of your bank account as well. When you put money in a bank, the bank simply promises to repay you what you have put in. So everything about the banking system is a promise to pay. Now, that's really important to understand. The point which makes banks' promises to pay different from everybody else's is that they are licensed by the government to deliver a promise to pay. They are basically regulated to ensure that when they say they can afford to repay you, they should be able to do so. And that's really important for our confidence in the banking system upon which we all depend. Otherwise, how would we literally function on a day-to-day -day basis in making the payments that we have to do? But how do banks create money? Well, that's very simple. If you ask for a loan from a bank, and lots of people do every day, what they do is check whether you are good for the loan. That is, can you afford to repay it? What they don't do is go into the vault and see if they've got any money because they don't need any money to make a promise to pay you. Instead, they check you can afford to pay them and you rely upon the fact that they can afford to pay you. So the consequence of your request for a loan is that you've made a promise to pay them and they've made a promise to pay you. And this is reflected in what happens next. They open a current account for you, and let's presume you'd asked for £10,000. Well, they put £10,000 in your current account. And they record your promise to pay them in a loan account at the bank, in which they put another £10,000. Of course, they are equal and opposite. In accounting terms, one's a debit and one's a credit. You can think in mathematical terms as one being a plus and one being a minus. But the truth is, they add up to zero. The money has been made out of thin air because there was nothing there beforehand, and if you cancelled the arrangement immediately, there would be nothing left. But you now believe you have £10,000 that you can spend, and importantly, you can. The bank will let you write a cheque, do a transfer, make a payment from that new account that they have created to whoever you want, and they will honour it. Now, that's how the bank creates money. So what can go wrong if we can make money out of thin air? How can a bank go bust? Well, there are two ways. One is that you don't repay them. You break your promise to pay. They have fulfilled their promise to pay someone else, but you haven't fulfilled your promise to pay them. Now, if everybody had the same bank, that wouldn't be too worrying, because all the debts would be within that one bank. The trouble is, not everybody has the same bank. In fact, there's a very good chance that when you made a payment out of the current account that they created for you when you asked for a loan, that the recipient was with another bank. And that means that the bank you borrow from has to make a payment to that other bank so that they in turn can put the money into the recipient's bank account. Now that arrangement is managed entirely through the Bank of England. It's called Central Reserve Banking. Now, that's where the government comes into this, and that's why banks are different from the rest of us, because the government regulates the central reserves of banks and even requires that they hold them. There are 
many hundreds of billions of pounds held in central reserve accounts now to make sure that banks should always be solvent. And that's critical. But if at any point of time a bank is reckless and lends too much, which can't be repaid, and this did happen not long ago when the Northern Rock Bank failed because it had offered too many mortgages which people could not afford to repay, then other banks lose confidence in that bank's ability to pay and quite literally the system can fail. So all our money is made out of thin air and some of it is made by the government when it spends and puts money into the economy by literally its spending on the health system and on education and so on and some is created by banks when they make loans and that's the only way in which literally money enters circulation in this country. But whereas the government can never fail because it can always create more money, banks can fail because they can lend recklessly and not recover the money that they are owed. And in that situation, banks really matter and the regulation of banks really matters as well. So we must understand that all money and all the credibility of all money is backed up by the government guarantee that it will monitor the banking system to make sure that our money is safe. But when we think we've got money, always remember that's only the case because the government ensures that is true. Nobody else can, nobody else will, and that's who you're dependent upon when you put money into your bank to make sure that they can repay you. I'm Richard Murphy, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this video series on YouTube if you're interested. Also look for us on Facebook. I am on Twitter, at Richard J Murphy. And at the same time, look at my blog, Tax Research UK, where you can find much more on these themes. And I'll see you again soon.